In this video, we'll look at the second order correlation to the energy. And we'll do that by first looking at the uh, coefficient of Lth order in lambda first to generalize what we saw for the first order energy corrections. So to do that, we'll again look at uh, the component of this equation along the state we're interested in, not the non-degenerate eigenstate and zero. So that means that we apply a bra to both sides of this equation. So this is our left-hand side. Uh, you notice over here that you have the Lth correction to the state. The first term on this side has the L minus one correction to the state, as well as the first order energy correction minus the perturbation. The second term over here has our second order correction in general times the L minus two correction to the state. And so on up until we get to the Lth order correction to the energy times our original eigenstate N zero. Okay, as usual, the left hand side over here is equal to zero because this term over here is just our original time independent Schrodinger equation. This EN can be on either side of the bra over here. In addition, since uh, every higher order correction to the state is orthogonal to the original state, Okay, so that means that the ni's don't have any component along n0 for i greater than or equal to one. Uh, then every term in this equation over here that is of this form, e and the jth correction to the energy times the L minus J correction to the state is equal to zero for L different than J. Okay, and if you don't see that, uh, try to write out more terms in this expansion, apply this orthogonality rule, keeping in mind that these energy corrections are constants and try to convince yourself of this. So this leaves us then with an expression for the Lth order correction to the energy. That looks like this. So this is the health order correction to our energy. And you'll notice in general to figure out the health order correction to the energy, you need to know the L minus one correction to the state. Okay, and this is where it becomes clear that to solve in general our perturbation series expansion, 
we need to sequentially solve for each order. We can verify this for first order to make sure that it coincides with what we found before. So first order being L is equal to one. We get that this is just the expectation value of the perturbation. Okay, so this agrees with what we found before for the first order correction. If we now look at the second order correction, so L is equal to two, what we get then is a term that looks like this. So again, to figure out the second order correction to the energy, we need the first order correction to the state. But we already figured out what that was in the previous video. This was minus a sum uh, for all k different than n. Okay, so this first part over here is from this term here. Cat N1 is going to be the rest of the terms I'm going to write down, including this sum. This sum comes from the expression for N1. So we had an expansion along the energy eigenstates of our Hamiltonian. We had a term that we call delta Kn. And this was divided by the differences in the energies of each state uh, to the state that we're looking at. According to our notation for delta HKN, this term over here will be delta H and K. Okay, so we're starting to clean up a little bit our expression for the second order uh, correction to the energy. Now we just need to figure out how these two are related. So. We're denoting delta H and K uh, by this bracket over here. Now, if you take the complex conjugate of this, just taking the complex conjugate of that. Now remember that when you take the complex conjugate of brackets, you flip every ket into a bra and every bra into a ket. And this was just our expression for delta H Kn. So that means that our second order correction this is for all k except n. This is the same thing as delta h n 
k uh, delta h k n complex conjugate. So we've replaced this according to what we saw over here. So finally, we're left with the absolute value of delta H Kn. divided by the differences in energy. Okay, so this is, uh, again, for k, all k different than n. And this is our second order contribution to the correction in our energy. So this means that the energy we're looking for has contributions from our original model Hamiltonian. Uh, first order contribution from our perturbation, which we said was equal to this, minus a second order contribution There you go, something like that, plus higher order terms that will denote by O lambda three. So this is any term that's uh, higher than lambda three in power. So this is second order correction to the energy. We also found uh, that our state as uh, in our perturbation series expansion, we know the zeroth order term. And we also found the first order uh, contribution to the correction, which was, uh, I suppose, minus sign. Okay, so this is as far as we've gotten in filling in our perturbation series expansion. We have the first two orders to the correction of the energy and the first order correction to the state. And that's as far as we'll go uh, at the moment. In the next video, we'll look at an example uh, where we'll apply each one of these corrections to a harmonic oscillator that's subjected to a uh, a constant electrostatic field.